Taking action for you. This morning on TV20 Detroit starts right now. What's happening in entertainment? From Tinseltown to the Big Apple, this is your weekly entertainment magazine with Greg Dunmore of PulseBeat.tv. Pulse of a new generation. PulseBeat.tv. Welcome to another edition of PulseBeat with Greg Dunmore. There's something very spiritual about Easter, and there's also something very spiritual about the continent of Africa, as I stand in the heart and soul of the Dr. Charles H. Wright Museum of African History. I'm reminded that there is no culture more brilliant than the African culture. We're going to take you to the beautiful country of Ghana. One can only think what the slaves must have thought, leaving paradise to something less than. Let the journey begin. Ghana, a country south of the Sahara that attained independence, the first country south of the Sahara that attained independence, and this is called Ghana, G-H-A-N-E. We had independence on the 6th of March 1957. The dawn of freedom lights up 92,000 square miles of independent land. In Accra, the capital city on Independence Day, the people gather behind their chosen leader. This former tribesman is a symbol of their past and their future. He is a symbol of their youth, their aims, their hard-won victory. Representatives of 69 nations join the people to honor freedom. Authority is handed over, and the whole world takes note. From this day forth, Ghana's decisions will be made in Ghana. So every 6th of March, we celebrate our independence day. Where every region will, uh, uh, will be celebrating the independence day. So coming uh, 6th of March is a very, very big ceremony being held today in India. I've been working for uh, 26 years as a tour guide and tour coordinator. I've handled a lot and a lot of tours from Asia, from America, almost all over the world. When Serenia Williams, the tennis lady, came to Ghana, I was a tour guide and uh, took her around. Coming to Africa for the first time where it all started for me was life-changing. I mean, I'm from Africa, even though I live in America. This is my home. This is where I'm from. And so to have a chance to come here and experience all that, and to see where people are here just helped make me want to experience different things and to build on it as well. When President Obama came to Ghana, I was told to be with uh, CNN, uh, we were at Cape Coast uh, uh, Castle and we visited the slave dungeons. 
one of the most striking things that I heard was that right above the dungeons in which male captives were kept was a church. And that reminds us that sometimes we can tolerate and stand by uh, great evil even as we think that we're doing good. You know, I think it was particularly important for uh, uh, Malia and Sasha, who are growing up uh, in, in such a blessed way, uh, to be reminded uh, that uh, history can take uh, very cruel turns. One of the attractions that our brothers and sisters from the U.S. and the diaspora always cannot escape is the slave dungeons, the slave dungeons. It was built as a castle, as a trading post, and now later it became uh, a place to keep human beings, where they maltreated some of our ancestors, and when they took them through that place to the other side of the world. Um, there is so much ceremonies that goes on when they come. Uh, we have purification ceremony in the slave dungeons. And this castle was built 182 years after the Elimina castle. So many scholars believe that this castle was built purposely for slave trade. Reasons being that the dungeons here are not the same as that of Elimina dungeons. Elimina dungeons were originally warehouses. And this area also became the headquarters for the British West Africa formerly in Sierra Leone. But the story behind it is so sad indeed. If you look at architecture, very interesting. But sad story behind it. it has become part of our history. It's our prayer that we don't repeat whatever transpired here centuries ago. African traditional temple we have here. It forms part of our heritage so of to Islamic faith. Where they trample upon their right, held them in the unsuitable conditions in the dungeons and well some of them were also thrown overboard on the high seas but in all the resilience survived and we are the proud descendant of those who survived and today we are called the diasporans of african american caribbeans so it was an open space where the men would have to walk through the camera like this like that depending on how one was chained walk through Join the women at the door of no return. Door of no return. Now, when our ancestors were being taken out of this place, the reason why they name it door of no return is that they have it in mind that these people are going in and they'll come here no more. They, 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 their families are lost. Uh, the relatives are lost and they have no idea they themselves where they are going. So they are just taking them out and they will come no more. So they put there the door of no return, meaning saying bye bye to them. Whether you die, you leave, or whatsoever. Platforms are engaged. Copy. Get ready to launch your show or product. Periscope ready. We're 5x5 five five ready to launch. Copy that. Trend worldwide across all major platforms. Ignition. 3, 2, 1. The world is waiting. Watkins Broadcasting. More than just TV. What happened to your business you've been dreaming about? Build Institute will support you every step of the way on your business journey. We offer business and project planning classes for aspiring and established entrepreneurs. We'll help you launch and test your concept, provide access to capital funding to fuel your business, and provide one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring. Through our alumni network, you'll have access to more resources as your business continues to grow. Located in vibrant Corktown, BUILD has co-working and dedicated desk memberships and spaces for hosting a variety of events. Become one of the thousands of successful BUILD graduates whose foundation began with us. 
Don't just dream about starting your business. Build it with Build Institute. For more information, visit us at www.buildinstitute.org. Behind me is the door of no return. Now, when our ancestors were being taken out of this place, the reason why they name it Door of No Return is that they have it in mind that these people are going in and they will come here no more. Some of our ancestors who were taken out of this place through the Door of No Return, they exhumed their skeleton from Jamaica and the US brought them in through the same door that they said the door of no return. Meaning that our ancestors who have come, who they brought their skeleton, have paved a way for all our brothers and sisters in their diaspora and everywhere to pretend to this place. Kipkos Castle, Almina Castle, and other castles. Today, this place is a World Heritage Monument by UNESCO. We are inviting each and everyone, everywhere, especially our brothers and sisters in the diaspora, this is for you. Please come over, come and experience. We are inviting all of you. Come in your names, and this is Charles Kobner, I'm a tour guide. You are welcome. Our hands are open. We are just waiting for you. God with you, please. Ashi. Defining obscenity would be the way that slaves were transported from Africa to these United States. At this exhibition at the Dr. Charles H. Wright Museum, we're reminded that this was something that defines the brutality of what mankind is capable of doing. Now we return to Ghana as the story continues. A quick look at the condemned cell. They wouldn't give you food, water, light, air until you drop dead. Oh, wow. Mm. No food, no water, no life in the dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know you were fighting for your freedom. Wow. Dehydration, suffocation, kill all. Let me on the light so you see the scratches on the wall. So these scratches were made by our ancestors using the chains to hit the wall. Bam, 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 bam. Elmina Castle was the largest uh, edifice that was built by Europe at that time. It is one of the biggest place where slaves were taken through. So uh, um, some, a lot of our ancestors were taken through there. And then we also have Cape Coast Castle, or, and that houses the slave, the dungeons. The castle is the building, and then the dungeons are in there. Um, we all go there, and then we also have a purification ceremonies, and a whole lot of ceremonies that takes place there. Currently, tours are being organized there. There are a lot of forts and castles in Ghana, but the major ones are these three that our brothers and sisters always come to see and go through a certain rituals. Before even independence, Kwame Nkrumah had a mentor called Dobi B. Du Bois. He, Kwame Nkrumah invited him to Ghana, um, but he wasn't given a, a, a passport. Later on, when, after we had independence, everything went through, and then he came down. Why uh, was he here? Kwame Nkrumah invited him here to uh, write an Encyclopedia Africa. Encyclopedia Africa. So Kwame Nkrumah gave him a whole flat, a whole place to stay and uh, uh, do his work. 
On February 23, 1963, a gathering was held in Ghana to celebrate African-American intellectual and Pan-Africanist W.E.B. Du Bois' 95th birthday and his recent Ghanaian citizenship. Two years prior, Du Bois had traveled to Ghana at the behest of the Ghanaian president Kwame Nkrumah to lead a special research project, the Africana Encyclopedia. In Du Bois' own words, An encyclopedia, not on the vague subject of race, but on the peoples inhabiting the continent of Africa. Soon after traveling to Ghana in 1961, the elderly Du Bois became ill and decided to celebrate Ghana and its dedication to Pan-Africanism by becoming a Ghanaian citizen and spending the last days of his life in the country. As the celebration of Du Bois' birthday and citizenship came to a close, President Nkrumah turned to leave the festivities but was stopped by the elderly Du Bois. Du Bois reached for his hand and held it tightly. He thanked Kwame Nkrumah for making it possible for him to finish his life in Africa. The first president of the Republic of Ghana took his leave in tears. W.E.B. Du Bois passed away later that year. At first glance, the relationship Du Bois and President Nkrumah shared appears deceptively simple to classify and describe. In Du Bois, Nkrumah found a brilliant intellectual and African civil rights activist responsible for the sustainment of positive ideas regarding civil rights, decolonization, and pan-Africanism, which is the social and political unity of all African natives. In Nkrumah, Du Bois saw a passionate African political leader capable of implementing radical pan-Africanist and socialist ideals. While the men did not meet until the 5th annual Pan-African Conference in 1945, the writings of the much older Du Bois and those of other key 20th century pan-Africanists had already helped to inspire Nkrumah. In the mid-1950s, Nkrumah would successfully implement pan-Africanist ideas when forming the Independent Republic of Ghana. Unfortunately, Discussing the particulars of their relationship beyond this simplistic classification is difficult. The main focus of writings on Du Bois' time in Ghana, when he would have primarily interacted with Nkrumah, is on the development of the Africana Encyclopedia project. Uh, currently, uh, Encyclopedia Africa is, uh, uh, is there. We have it now, has been printed, we have it now. But he died before it was printed. He started and other people came and continued. So his house is a, a very big tourist attraction to our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. It has been said in African ideology, when you say the name of an ancestor, blessings are bestowed. Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois was so important, not only to this country, but also to the country of Ghana. And it must also be noted that he was the first African-American to receive a PhD from the internationally acclaimed Harvard University. Stay tuned as we continue this magnificent journey through Ghana. Me. What happened to your business idea you've been dreaming about? Build Institute offers business and project planning classes for aspiring and established entrepreneurs. We'll help you launch and test your concept, provide access to capital funding, and provide one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring. So don't just dream about starting your business, build it with Build Institute. Classes begin February 1st. To register and for more information, visit us at www.buildinstitute.org. Water, they say, is life. So as they are blowing the horn, kneeling means a reverence. Blowing the horn, uh, normally it is air that comes or sound, but this one is water. So there is life. Whoever comes here, there should be life through that person every day, every time, everywhere. This area has been named after our first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. What happened was that this place was a polo ground for the British and the expatriates in Ghana, and this is where they play polo. And when we had independence, Kwame Nkrumah used this place as a place where he's going to announce the independence of Ghana. So just to spice them, he used this place as a place where he pronounced the independence of Ghana. There is a new African in the world. That new African is ready to fight his own battle and show that after all, 
The black man is capable of managing the whole of us. You also have the great man, Marcus Gavi. Oh, yeah, this guy is a great guy. Marcus Gavi, uh, uh, who introduced the Black Star line. Um, and the Black Star became the Ludo Star of African freedom. So when you come to Africa, you see a lot of countries adapting the star. The flag stands as a symbol of the power of the country and the success of attaining its independence after years of struggles with the British colonial government. The red color of the national flag of Ghana was used to represent the blood of forefathers who led the struggle for independence, the Big Six. The Big Six formed the United Gold Coast Convention Political Party, UGCC, to liberate the people of the Gold Coast from the slavery and oppression of British colonial rule. The gold color represents the mineral resources, mostly found in the Ashanti region of Ghana, helping to harness the wealth of the country. Gold is one of Ghana's mineral resources, found mostly in Obuasi and Takwa in the Ashanti region. The enrichment of the gold resources of Ghana led to the initial name, the Gold Coast, which was later changed to Ghana after the struggle and success of the attainment of independence in 1957. Ghana's other mineral resources are diamond, bauxite, and manganese, among others. The green symbolizes Ghana's rich forest and natural world, which provide the nation with oil, food, and cash crops such as cocoa, timber, shea butter, and all kinds of food products for the country. The black star of the Ghanaian national flag is a symbol used to represent the emancipation of Africa and unity against colonialism. The black star was adopted from the flag of the Black Star Line, a shipping line incorporated by Marcus Gavi, which operated from 1919 to 1922. It is where the Ghana national football team derived their nickname, the Black Stars. Uh, he also has a house there, a house that has been named after Marcus uh, Muzaya Gavi. There is another building there that is meant for our brothers and sisters in the diaspora, known as Diaspora Forum. It's also another important place that African Americans and Africans in the diaspora, anytime that they come, they go there to see this is wonderful. What do they do there? Uh, when you go there, we will see a whole lot. Today we stand tall as particularly Ghanaians who from the South Sahelan community gain our political independence before everyone else, other countries emulated Ghana. And then they also strive to gain their in independence from their oppressors. So the blacks, we are resilient and we are hard-working people. We respect people and therefore we need other people to also respect us. And that is the way to go. We are peace-loving people and we continue to love people as the word says from the creator. So Ghana, my happy home, my happy land, the land of culture, the land of hospitality. I will take this opportunity to urge my brothers and sisters in the diaspora to, as a matter of agency, visit Ghana, trace their roots, see where our ancestors were forcibly taken from, where they trampled upon their right, held them in the un 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 unsuitable conditions in the dungeons and well, some of them were also thrown overboard on the high seas. But in all, the resilience survived. And we are the proud descendants of those who survived. And today, we are called the diasporans or African-American Caribbeans. So visit Africa, visit Ghana, visit the slave dungeons, and be part of the celebrations. Thank you very much. From Cape Coast Castle, Morgan Mason. <laughs>there are over 70 ethnic groups in Ghana and each of these ethnic groups have their own unique traditional dance style that means there are over 100 traditional dances in Ghana alone
for joining us on this part one of our magnificent journey to Ghana. And as I stand before you in this beautiful shirt that was from Ghana, it reminds us that there's also so much more to talk about as relates to arts, entertainment, and culture. Stay tuned as we will continue our journey to Ghana. Thanks for watching this edition of Pulse Beat with Greg Dunmore.